Hello Ace, this is RetroTK2 and today we're back making our Pokemon Romag. Last time, if you remember, we set it up so that our player can go and interact with this Pokeball. And although it looks like nothing has happened, if I press start, you can see that we actually have 600 steps, I believe, for the Safari Zone and 30 Safari Balls. So. Basically what's happened now is that whenever we click on this Pokeball, we actually go into the Safari game mode. And if I take a little couple of steps, you'll see that we go down and decrement the timer, the steps counter is, which is fantastic. Now, I've done an awful lot of research off screen just to check to see how we are actually going to make it so that we can make a timer for Brock's gym. Basically saying that if a person, say a trainer, wants to earn their gym badge, it will go down as a timer, maybe even randomly, uh, allow you to pick and choose certain different uh, trainers that will pop up in some sort of alert faction. And yeah, so I was thinking that tapping into the actual Safari Zone method of doing it the way that the game actually does it would be the perfect way to do it. Based on my research, yes, it seems like we aren't going to be able to do it with the language that we are currently using. So basically, uh, I thought that we were using, I thought we were using assembly language uh, with the advanced map. But it turns out that advanced map, I believe, is using C. I'm almost certain that it's C or if not C, some sort of derivative of C. But it's not, it's definitely not assembly language. Let's put it that way, at least not based on any of the research that I've done. So again, that could still be wrong, yes, but I don't believe that it is. Oh, goodness sakes. Changing tiles all over the place, yes. So let's go here and events, and let's check and open our script. So we open our script. This is actually C, and it actually gets compiled to assembly language. So if I go into script search, and I can't actually search this one, yes. I kind of want to use an easier one to do. But I'll tell you what, we will go with this one for the moment. So, okay, here we have, so if I compile and now type in something to search, you'll see that it actually comes up with our scripts, as you would certainly expect them to appear. Now, I can actually, go, I'll use this one here. If I go and click on thumb, and then go across, you'll see that we get this. This is our assembly language. So this is what our code, this, is compiled down to. And I don't really want to go too much into what this thumb means, but essentially it is just assembly language. There's a, another one called, I believe it's ASM, although it may be ARM. Basically there's two types of mode you can have for assembly is yes, either thumb or A or M and thumb is the one that is mostly used since it takes up far less storage room and it executes quicker than ARM. I believe 99% of the time you will be using thumb. Honestly, it's not that important, yes, but this is pretty much, this stuff here is very important for us. And a lot of the research that I've done has certainly made that so. So today, what I want to do is go through and show you how you can actually it's not necessarily to do with, well, it is to do with assembly language, but it's more to do with addresses. So I want to do it so that we can actually search our cheats to try and find this value here for our uh, Safari Zone, just to check to see the steps that are taken. This isn't actually going to be what we use uh, whenever we're actually using our uh, final timer race, but this is very, very good and certainly does teach you quite a bit about <laughs> the the uh, task that we have ahead of ourselves. So going away from C and going into assembly is far harder race. It really is tough, but we shall go for this now. So, okay, this basically is where you can go in and search for cheats. So what we're doing is we're trying to find this value here, the 599, which is actually quite a good value to do. I kind of want to do the 600 one, so I'm going to reset that. Perfect. So now if I go into the search for cheats, go to specific value, and then we do the data size. Now data size, you can use eight bits. I believe the one that we're trying to find is actually 16 bits. So we'll go with that one for the moment. 
go to equal since it's the comparable type you know you I mean by all means put in greater than or less than but we know that it's meant to equal 600 and here you can make it either assigned or unsigned or hexadecimal that you're searching for now since we already know that we are dealing with steps which are always going to be positive integers we can stick with unsigned so yeah this should all hopefully work so if i type in 600 now and click start and go search you'll see it comes out with this address 02039996 now what does that mean is yes, well basically what this means i don't know if i can yeah, i think i'm gonna have to come in basically this is the address of this whatever value is stored here will be at that zero to well whatever it was so let's even prove that now so five nine six go to search for cheats and oh well hey yeah, there it is there so that's brilliant so basically i can go add cheat so i can say add cheat and i want to add the value 999 so okay go to okay click okay go to cheats cheat list and you can see that it's enabled this if i uncheck this box then it's disabled enabled disabled so if i enable it and press start you'll see that the number has jumped to 999 and if i walk ah it stays there at 999 that's because the cheat is continually active so if i now walk after deactivating the cheat you'll see that it actually counts down which is awesome miss i mean that's really really cool this is a extremely powerful tool and it's allowed me to actually be able to find kind of um I mean, I'll give you a little bit of background. Yes, the, the research that I've done, I've actually had to put breakpoints and stuff and actually trace out a lot of the assembly code that we were going to use. And then using this method, I was able to find the actual address that we needed. I was able to search this address within that code to find within assembly the actual code that we would need associated with this. So anything that would flag up this would probably be code associated with the Safari zone. So yeah, I mean, really, really powerful piece of kit. So if I go in to add another cheat, I kind of want to just show you this here, uh, just to show you how this is sort of working. If I type in the value here, and I'll do one, two, three, one, two, three, go okay, click okay, and then now we've probably got two conflicting cheats. Yep, so I believe it's that one. Click okay, press start now, you'll see we have question mark two, three. So basically this, this GUI element, I want to say, will tap out or cap out at uh, 999. So we're going to have to find a way to make it so that we can elongate this or maybe even customize this entire little box area so that we can put in, well, steps counter or whatever sort of timers we want. We could have multiple timers here, yes. We could probably even have a different, maybe even like a breakdown of all the like bills that Brock has to pay or our gym leader has to pay. So it's a lot of exciting stuff. So let's go in and also let's try and find the other cheat that I was searching for, which was the Safari ball. So, okay, this one's a little bit trickier since it's not a nice number like 600. It's not as unique as we want it to be. So now if I go into search, oh, let's start again. There we go. Perfect. You'll see that we're getting back quite a number of different values so so yeah not not exactly where we want to be on that one here so if i go back and then go into maybe a just a different area fuchsia is a perfect place to go and then we go back into our cheats and search for cheats you can see we have gone from an old value of 30 to this new value yes so now this well goodness knows what these are to do with who cares they aren't important now we are only concerned with these four since 30 and 30 and of course our safari balls haven't changed so they should hopefully be the exact same unfortunately i haven't got a clue which values these ones here correspond to so what we're going to do yes is add a cheat for absolutely every single one of them so here i'm going to add 10 and i'm going to add a cheat 20. i mean i could have done one two and three actually it probably would have been better race because i'm going to have to skip 30 since we've already got 30 and then I want to add a cheat in here for 50. Okay, click okay, press start and we've got 20. So whichever one it was 20 on our list, I believe it was this one. Okay, so perfect, 0203994. So if I add a cheat for that and do 100, click okay, click okay, go back into our cheats list 
and have a little look at all these ones here. I believe you can be removed, you can be removed, you can be removed, and you definitely can be removed. Okay, so I'm an idiot. I have completely deleted our previous, our steps one. That was silly. Okay, okay, let's have a little look again at this one. Search for cheats. 213, 213. 2123, I believe, is the one we're looking for. So search. Oh, start, search. Perfect. Oh, my goodness. That was the one there. Zero. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Add cheat and add in 999. Okay. 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 And go back into cheat list. And there we go. Now we've got a perfect cheats list. So now if I press start, you'll see we've got 999. And we have now got... I believe it was 100 balls we put in here, yes, I can't actually remember, but as you can see, this one taps out at about 900, no, not 900, sorry, 99 balls is where this GUI taps out at. So if I go into our cheats again, search for cheats, and go with, we could search for the hexadecimal, I believe. No, we can't. Unsigned. I'm actually trying to look for the actual cheat here, is, but I'm not actually able to get it. Okay, so let's go back into our cheats list. Go to cheat. Oh, perfect. And we can just add one at the address that we wanted. 0203999994, I believe it was. And value of 99. Click OK. Go up here. Remove this one. Go OK. Press start. And as you can see, 999 steps and 99 steps for this one is. So this is a really powerful tool that will allow us to actually be able to go through and check out the cheats for Visual Boy Advance. Easy peasy is, which is kind of cool. So yeah, a bit of a short episode today is, but it's always nice to get like a nice bit of information out there. And then next time, I think I kind of want to go into the ASM, I was almost going to say ASMR there is, but no, ASM, uh, the assembly language stuff, and all of the research that I've done on that. It's pretty cool, Ace. Very heavy duty, especially for the stuff that we're doing. And I gotta admit, Ace, I'm a complete novice at pretty much all of it. I've really been fumbling around trying to find certain things. I thought this was really cool. And uh, this is pretty cool too, actually, the tools disassembler. You can actually see all the actual assembly language as, as is here. And you can actually go through and change these values. These are our um, registries, Ace. We'll get into them. A little bit ah, it is ARM, ARM and then of course thumb which is pretty much what most GBA cartridges I believe run on I believe there's some other features in AR, ARM that you will use but well a lot of the research I've done as they've mentioned it said that you'll use some most of the time so there you go is and yeah so I'm gonna leave it there and I'll pick it up next time so yeah Rate, comment, and subscribe. Yes, I hope you're enjoying this series. I'm having a ton of fun with it. And uh, doing the research off screen, I think, is definitely going to help us out. You can email me at retrotk2 at gmail.com with any ASM tips uh, or tutorials. Thank you for watching this, and I'll see you in the next video.